I think we're live. Looks kind of live. Am I alive? I'm alive. Live. Hey, everybody. 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 Homestar Runner. I'll never forget you. Okay. It looks like our sound's up and I'm up. Everything's live. Tolowitz says I'm live. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the... What day of the week is it edition? Monday edition. You think I'm kidding. The Monday edition of Ask Mike Anything. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies on CompTIA certifications. Now here we concentrate primarily on the A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+, plus exams, but we can also go into other CompTIA certifications as well as other IT certifications. So the whole idea here, folks, is that you ask me questions and I answer them. You ask those questions by typing them right into that chat window. And while we're looking at that chat window where it says top chat, you might want to switch that to uh, live chat and uh, be ready to watch as things go zooming by. My name's Mike Myers. Sorry. So I'm being distracted by interesting communications. All right, we're about to get started. Okay. Uh, all right, I think we're about to officially start. Okay, folks, so welcome to the Mike Myers Ask Mike Anything live stream. Now, um, the main way you ask me questions is by typing questions right into that uh, chat window. Uh, I try to catch them all. I usually get them all. Every now and then I miss one. I'm amply and well supported by my buddies uh, Dave Rush. I'm not sure who else is on here for sure. David Mohan. Good to see you, man. I haven't seen David Mohan in a while. Last week, he says. And it uh, looks like some questions are loading up. Okay, great. So anyway, uh, so not only are we asking questions here, folks, we're giving things away. We're going to be giving away free practice questions today. And we will also be giving away a CompTIA voucher. That's right. For all you folks who are complaining about how expensive those CompTIA exams are, wait till you take someone else's exams before you complain about CompTIA. Uh, we, uh, and th this has been arranged by CompTIA. We thank you so much. Go great CompTIA. Uh, they're, we're going to be uh, giving away one voucher today. We give away three vouchers per week. One on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Friday with my buddy Dave Rush when Dave Rush does his D-R-A-M-A -A or drama. So uh, this is a great place, especially uh, I got an email from somebody today going, man, he's so expensive. I was like, show up. You know, these do not tend to be very, very heavily populated AMAs, so your chances of winning are good. All right, so let's see what's happening out there. Uh, yeah, so we start here at two o'clock Central Standard Time and we run until either, we run until three o'clock Central Standard Time or until the questions run out. So either way is fine with me, we're here for you and uh, glad to be helpful today. All right, so what's going on? Will Shaw, hey, good to see you, Will. Da -ba -da -da. Omer, hello and good evening from Israel. Excellent. Good to meet. Good to see you, Omer. You, Omer, you sound like you've been on before. I don't remember. I don't want to get in trouble though and lie. Uh, Andre, my buddy, is here. I'm just running through. Ping, not first. Uh, David M. Patricia Grace. Good to see you, Patricia. Uh, Alan Duggan. I have an interview tomorrow with an IT company. Alan, good luck to you on that, man. Uh, break a leg. I'm 33 today also. Look at this, man. We got Alan Duggan's 33. So, Alan, I'm not quite twice your age. That girl is half his age. Don't say something like that. Okay. Um, what else is going on? Dave Rush. Stay for the contest. Yep. Uh, Sam, okay, we got some questions here. Starting at two o'clock straight up from Sam Millard. Are the videos on LinkedIn any different from the ones you purchase at the website? Basically, no. Uh, basically, no. Um, there are some small differences, but six of one, half a dozen the other. The main reason we still sell our videos on our, when you say the website, I think you mean www.totalsem.com. 
uh, the reason we still sell them is there's lots of schools and stuff. And I'm like, you know, you can get them on LinkedIn or Udemy, and they're like, no, we got to get them from you. That's why we do that. Uh, but yes, Sam, they're basically the same ones. <coughs> Yeah, uh, sorry, I was, I was exactly a minute late here for uh, reasons we won't mention. I'll give you a clue. Don't drink a lot of sodas before you start a live show. Just going to throw that to you. Tolowit knows who Homestar Runner is. Thank goodness. What was Homestar? Yeah, here we go. This should be my competition. Okay, somebody answer this question for me. What was Homestar Runner's girlfriend's name? What was the girlfriend for Homestar Runner? Sam likes, Sam likes, you like the plaid? He's gone plaid! Quote that movie. I don't know. I'm not saying we quote movies a lot, but a, a long time ago, I was trying to hire uh, an instructor for some online, not, not online, instructor-led training. And I had two candidates, and they were both great. They were just fantastic. And I could not... I mean, they, they're physically similar people. I, I had nothing. They were exactly the same. So I had to come up with a tiebreaker, and here's the tiebreaker I came up with. You guys ready? <coughs> the answering this question literally got my buddy Richard Smith a job well, with me. Here's the question. You guys ready? Okay. In the original Star Trek, in the episode where the hippies took over the Enterprise. There was a guy who kept singing basically the same song over and over again throughout the episode. Uh, in fact, at one point he was doing a jam session with Spock. Name the song. <laughs> uh, if anybody gets that, I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna die. Who? I like my plaid. Kyle's here, we can start now, everybody. Jose Frias. Hey, Jose. Everybody. Safmo just passed my, oh, hey, woo! Saf, 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 Saf. That's thousands of people cheering your name, man. So you've passed, congratulations. Well done, well done, well done, well done. David Mohan, CEH or Pentest Plus? Man, David, right now they're neck and neck. Uh, obviously, CEH has been around for a lot longer than Pentest Plus. Pentest Plus is getting a lot of good noise out there. Many people consider now the Pentest. I have not taken Pentest Plus. Have I? I, I? I literally lose track. Like I tell the IRS every year, I forgot. Uh, maybe I did take it. Anyway, the bottom line is a lot of people consider the Pentest Plus to be more difficult than Certified Ethical Hacker. It's, uh, you can use multiple uh, forms of uh, training, which you really can't do with uh, CEH. And it's a lot cheaper too. So, you know. Look guys, I am not some fanboy for CompTIA. I, the reason I work with CompTIA as much as I do is because they do a great job. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to cheer on CompTIA because they do a good job. David Mohan, I'd go Pentest Plus. Christina Strickland, what is a distributed denial of service attack and why does it happen? Well, what is it? Uh, distributed denial of service attack is when you get a whole bunch of computers, you usually put some uh, bit of malware on thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of computers. And you make all of these computers try to access the same website at the same time. Uh, distributed denial of service is used as a blackmail technique against uh, uh, web, uh, websites. Uh, it is used as a censorship technique to shut down websites. The main thing uh, di Distributed Denial of Service Act does is as the name says, it denies people service. Uh, deny, uh, distributed means you have tens, hundreds of thousands of computers all over the world, all at the same time, at the same beep, they all access a web uh, site. 
And not only do they try to access the website, they access it in naughty ways with malformed HTTP requests and stuff like that, which means that your computer has to take a long time. To your server takes a long time to respond to it. Uh, di uh, denial of service attacks are still a huge problem today. People do it for blackmail. Uh, if you want me to stop doing a denial of service attack, go buy me three bitcoins. Uh, they do it, uh, governments do it to suppress free speech. There's lots of reasons to do it. Christina, if there's a website that you don't like, DDoS that thing. So there you go. Holy shamoleons. Tolowit going to Eden. Folks, our friend and favorite Hawaiian, Tolowit, actually remembered the song. Tolowit, here's looking at you, sweetheart. Wow. Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, da -da. Andre, don't drink a lot of sodas before a live show. But Andre, they're so delicious. Uh, do you have to get rid of all the cans? No, I'm just kicking them. Um, Sam Millard, who is the Mike Myers for CCNA trading? I don't really know anybody. Oh, there are a couple of good folks out there. And knowing my buddy Dave Rush, I think he has an opinion on this. And we'll see if Dave types something into the uh, chat window. There is a name. It is not. Is Network Chuck a CCNA guy? Does anybody know? I'm not sure. Sam, stick around with us here for a minute. We'll get an answer to that. Justin Kinsey, good to see you too, man. Tolowit, Marzipan. Is her name Marzipan? This is, this is uh, Homestar Runner's girlfriend. I thought it was Lanolin. You know what? I'm not, I, uh, God bless it. Uh, Mohammed, good to see you again, man. Will Show, God, that was an awful start. Well, I, well, I didn't say it was a great Star Trek episode. I'm just trying to give you a sense of the kind of guys and gals who work for me. We're nerds. Uh, in the year 2520, in the year 25, it was William Jeske. The song was in the year 2525, not 2025. Oh my gosh. Sam Millard, you were close too. This is so good, man. We got some serious nerds and nerds that's there. Justin Kinsey, Maiden Wine. Justin Kinsey, you're wrong, but you're wrong in a very, very cool way because you are confusing Star Trek episodes. The episode you're talking about is the people were all Roman gods and they forced the crew of the Enterprise to do bad things. And that was very famous because that was the first interracial kiss on United States uh, broadcast television when Kirk kissed Uhura. Oh, man, Uhura back in those days. Ha <laughs> ha. She's probably still gorgeous, but you know. Tanmay, how do we take part in the giveaway? Well, first of all, Tanmay, show up here. That's half the battle. Uh, Tanmay, in a few minutes, we're going to be having the, uh, it's not necessarily, it's a competition, really. I know I say the word giveaway, but it's really a competition. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Kiernan sitting for the Network Plus next week. Good luck, Kiernan. Break a leg. Uh, do you have any advice for the exam? Yeah, just relax. The mo I keep telling people it over and over again. If you ever think that there is any training, and I'm going to tell you folks, stepping on my mic cord, you're never going to find anywhere uh, certification training that is going to be so effective that literally you won't have any question marks on the exam. It's impossible. It's too broad of a topic. I mean, let, let, you know, A plus is the worst. Uh, Security plus is the second worst. Net, net plus is the easier of those three. Uh, the trick is, is how do you deal with questionable questions? 
I mean, the reality of the situation is, is that I would be hard pressed to come up with questions on the CompTIA A plus where I couldn't get it down to two potential answers. And if you can get it down to two potential answers, you're already got 50, 50 odds on any given question, right? So you go through and let's say you get half of them and you know half the questions, right? So you're already at 100% on 50% of them. And you go through a second time, and I, I'm speculating here, but you go through a second time and you can get them all down to 50? That literally means you are at worst a 75%, which is a pass. So yeah, it, don't let yourself freak out that the number one reason people fail CompTIA exams is test anxiety. Period. So be cool. Uh, Jeremy Parker, Network Chuck is the guy. Uh, he, Network Chuck is, is a good guy. I, I've, been, I've watched a number of, of his shows. I, I think he's very good. Alan Owens, Network Chuck does do CNA, CCNA. Yeah. And then uh, uh, TC is recommending Wendell Odom. It's a great book for CCNA. David, oh, uh, Jeremy Parker at 214. David Baum, B-O-A-L, it ends with an A-L. He's pretty good too. Uh, da -da. Will Shaw, I wasn't saying it was their best Star Trek. Well, I can't, can't argue with you on that one. It was not their best Star Trek. Mirror Mirror was a great Star Trek episode. I even like the, uh, the Enterprise version of Mirror Mirror. It's good stuff. <laughs> mm. Christina Strickland, the big question, Star Trek War or Gate? War or Gate, War or Gate, Star Trek. I'm not sure what that means. Exodus, hey Mike, ever mess around with PowerShell? Yes, uh, not only do I mess around with it, it's a important tool for any Windows administrator or support person. Uh, here in the Total Seminars channel, we've got some wonderful PowerShell episodes and I'd recommend you watch them in terms of learning practical stuff and how to use PowerShell, limitations and stuff like that. Please check it out. It's right here on the Total Seminars channel here on YouTube. Uh, Kyle Haynes, what do you think of Linus Tech Tips? Uh, I used to like them. Uh, he is walking advertisement of the danger of being too big, I think. Uh, becomes more fluff, you know, less serious tech-minded, but uh, he's a great tech, superb tech. I can't even challenge that. But, man, he gets a lot of free stuff, and he's got beautiful offices, and, you know, he, he, he's going for the, for the counts, in my opinion. But I, I, I completely re respect him for uh, his uh, tech skills, uh, and his presentation, presentation style. Star Wars or Star, Star Trek, Star War or Stargate? Stargate? Ugh. Uh, Star Trek, Star Wars. Uh, probably Star Trek. Uh, Star Wars is for 13-year-old uh, boys. And uh, that's my opinion. Werner Von Spui, starting my... Cybersecurity journey at 45. Werner, you're a child, you're a little baby, your wrists are mainly cartilage, but congratulations. My plan path is A plus, net plus, security, pest, pentos. I think you're okay. It's a pretty standard path, Werner. Uh, do you need the A plus though? Honestly, if, you're, if your goal is to go to become a you know, security person, I don't know if you'd need A plus. That's my opinion. But Mike, don't you sell A plus? Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm gonna sell you what you don't need, mine. All right. Ugh, my nose is itching again. Tolo, it's Star Wars is life. Uh. 
All right, guys. Okay, so it seems like things are all slowed down. It's already 20 after two. Uh, so let's go ahead and do some competitions. Now, folks, uh, these first competition that we're about to do, this first competition is for 90-day free access to the Mike Myers Total Tester product. Uh, now, this can be A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+, plus, uh, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. We have, we, we have lots and lots of different uh, practice exams for lots and lots of different types of IT certifications, uh, certainly well beyond just the basic uh, big three. So uh, this is what we're about to compete for. So here's how we compete, folks. I'm about to show you a multiple choice question, and the first person who types the answer in to my satisfaction into the chat window wins. Uh, do not type just A, B, C, or D. You have to type enough of the word, so enough of the answer, so I know what you're talking about. Uh, also, just because you think you're first, that doesn't mean you are. It's whoever's first on my screen is the one who's going to be the winner, okay? Also, so if I miss it, it and I miss you, sorry. I've been getting a lot of people are getting a little sensitive, you know? It's like, I don't like the way you give things away. Well, you know what? Tough bananas there, hockey puck. It is, it's my show and I'm giving free stuff away any way I want. Mm. Yes, I'm a promising singer. My voice dies at sea. <laughs> okay, we'll do the competition. Hang on, hang on. All right. I have a question up, but I'm not sure I like it. Ooh, I do like this question. All right. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. We're about to do our first question today. First person who writes the answer down correctly wins. This is a networking question. This is a networking hardware question. Network, Network Plus loves these. So does A Plus, but here we go. A computer user, Zaphod, Beetlebox, I'm sure, is unable to log onto the domain from his desktop computer. A cable certifier is used to check his network cable, and it shows a very high value for next. Which of the following is most likely the cause? Yeah, do not write out A, B, C, or D, people. Write it, tell, write whatever it is. So is it uh, a decibel loss? Are receive and transmit reversed? Do we have split cables? Or do we have crosstalk? So this is one of these interesting questions because uh, these are ones that it's definitional. So you have to really know what these terms mean. So DB is decibel loss. So that's a, uh, we're, we're, we're losing signal strength over, it's attenuation issue, which could be, it, it could be attenuation, but, um, uh, the re receive and transmit uh, pairs are reversed. We have split cables or we have crosstalk. So the trick here is what does NEXT stand for? Well, folks, NEXT stands for near end cross talk. So the answer here is going to be, well, better be, let's make sure I'm right. Oh, by the way, folks, this is actually the total tester uh, tool. Uh, check your answer. D is correct. All right. So as we take a look at this, folks, it is crosstalk. So a lot of people would look at this particular one and they go, well, Mike, uh, I'm going to look here in a minute. DB loss could be an attenuation and a re DB attenuation over time could result in crosstalk issues. Um, Pretty doubtful though. Uh, receive and transmit reverse, you're not gonna get that. Split cables, it could be. But again, the real answer is crosstalk. Next stands for near end crosstalk. As, so you put in a cable tester, and if you're getting cross, crosstalk doesn't come out of the middle of a cable, folks. Crosstalk comes from the crimps, nine times out of 10. I'm looking for a cable. I'm gonna try not to step on my very expensive microwave uh, microphone one more time. Just looking for a network cable. Uh, I don't have one here. Oh well. Surely I do. I do and don't call me Shirley. 
All right. Ah, found one. Or at least I found the end of one. <clears throat> so whenever you're te when you're certifying a cable run, you have you plug your uh, cable tester into one end, and in the other end you're going to have like some kind of loopback device. It comes with the cable testers. So uh, crosstalk is something you look at each pair. So there's four pairs in here. So that, well, you're not doing this, you're plugging into a cable tester, pressing a button, and then you're gonna go eat a Snickers bar because there's nothing you do, it's a completely automated process. Uh, so crosstalk simply means that there's interference between pairs. Uh, you get interference between pairs for all kinds of reasons. Uh, badly crimped uh, uh, crimps will make uh, crosstalk. Uh, wrong, the wrong cat rating of uh, crimp for your type of cable you have. There's a lot of reasons it happens. And in fact, even a perfectly crimped cable is going to have some amount of crosstalk. But you have two kinds of crosstalk, folks. So the first thing you're going to do, like for example, I'm going to, you're not doing this. You have a cable tester it's doing. You snap it in, you press test. And it's going to test uh, pair one and two. It tests pair one and two against pair three and four. It tests pair one and two against five and six. It tests pair one and two against seven and eight. Then, then, it tests pair one and two against pair three and four on the other end of the cable. So we have near end crosstalk or next, which you're just testing with among yourselves here. And then you have far end crosstalk where you're testing a local pair against a, uh, the crimp on the other end of the cable. It's very important. All cable testers will test for crosstalk both ways. And the answer is, folks, is that the amount of crosstalks measured in decibels, and I don't have these numbers memorized off the top of my head, that's why I use cable testers, how much crosstalk is allowed. And uh, if you have too much, you basically end up recrimping the run. More often than not is, is what you do. Uh, Crosstalk could happen from physically damaged cables, stuff like that. But that's what that is. So the answer is D, crosstalk. Whew, let's see, do we have any answers here? Is Alex here? Hi, Alex. There she is. All right. So I think I have a winner here, but I'm going to put that over for my buddy Dave Rush to double check me. He may already have an answer for me because Dave is just cool that way sometimes. All right. Oh, woo, boy, Dave, I am so glad that I double checked what you got there. All right. In this particular case, the winner is 90 day free access to the total seminars, total tester Test bank of your choice. You get to choose. And the winner is Pujan Kavi. Pujan, congratulations to you. All right, now, Pujan, in order to get your prize, you've got to jump through a couple of hoops here, mon frere. So, Pujan, in order to get your, uh, in order to take your prize, you've got to send an email to Dave Rush. So, Pujar, uh, send an email to Dave R, D A V E R, at totalsem.com. In that email, Put your YouTube name, which is going to be uh, Pujan Kavi. Number two, put your email address. But Mike, it's an email. Why do I have to send you an email address in the email? Because people screw things up and we need you to do that. And number three, tell us which exam you want. And you get it. So Ka Pujan, congratulations to you. You won 90 day free access to whatever you want, man. A plus, net plus, security plus, IT fundamentals, cloud, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Whew, man, I gotta tell you, time moves fast when you're doing this. Uh, now folks, people sometimes have questions for me and people get a little shy or things like that. Um, and that happens, it's not a big deal. If you wanna ask me a question and you just don't feel like putting it on the screen, feel free to send me an email directly. My email is michaelm at totalsem.com and uh, I would love to hear from you, uh, especially if your question is complicated or long, this is a place to go. If you're a gamer, I'm Senor Pepe on uh, Steam, and then I'm Deswed's at just about anything. If you ever 
trying to find me, just search for Desweds, and uh, life is good. All right. All right. Let's see if we got any questions in there. Jared Graham, aha, learned something. That's what I'm here for, man. I'm a teaching machine. Uh, Exodus, what exactly causes crosstalk? Uh, the actual cause of crosstalk is going to be, man, where's Dave Rush when I need him? The actual cause of crosstalk, because well, you, you're not really asking the hard question, and that is, okay, what is crosstalk? It's interference, but how does that interference manifest? I don't know, it's electromagnetic interference of one type or another, but it's, it's caused by bad crimps, bad cable, uh, not crimping to certain cat standards. You know, people forget when you're crimping cable and you're putting a crimp on, there has to be a very specific distance from the last twist in a pair to the end of the cable, which here in the United States is like half an inch. So what's that going to be? It's going to be, uh, I can do this in my head, 2.54 centimeters per inch. Half is 1.25, 1 and 1 eighth centimeter. There you go. <laughs> hey, all you Europeans, let me tell you guys something. As an American, I can tell you, we love the metric system. I love it. I mean, if you start like trying to figure out things like force and power and stuff like that, in empirical units, trying to figure out like a pound force versus a pound mass is a pain. And uh, anybody who's ever got to enjoy using things like Newtons uh, is a huge fan of the metric system. And uh, most Americans I know can pretty easily convert uh, kilograms to pounds, stuff like that in their head without even thinking about it. I can. <laughs> Told Andre, if you use a cable tester, make sure the other end is not plugged into a massive PoE switch. Uh, doesn't work. Neither does my cable. Oh, you smoked a cable tester, Andre. Yipe. Considering some of those are $15,000, that can be expensive. Uh, yeah, normally with a cable tester, you have a... The cable tester, you, you unsnap this thing from the side, and it, it does... It's the other end. It's not just a loopback. It's more than a loopback. Although people call it a loopback. JM. Hi, have you ever used a micro bit device? If so, what do you think of it? I do not remember using a micro bit device. Say, sorry, JM. JM, JM, send me a link or something if there's something that you want me to talk about. <laughs> Exodus, Mike, you made me fully understand the metric system thanks to your A plus course. Did I do that? Mr. G, for Fahrenheit versus Celsius. I always say count your degrees the same way you count your money from zero to 100. There you go. So I was telling you I could convert. I, I have trouble converting temperatures, nine-fifths plus 32 or whatever it is. As an American, what I've learned is that if you get comfortable with like what's body temperature in Celsius, what's boiling in Celsius, what's freezing in Celsius, and then know what it is in Fahrenheit, you can guesstimate it pretty good. Uh, Omar Natan, Mike, so I got the CCNA cert and the CUP cert. Do you think I should go for the Network Plus? No, no. Omar, go get a job. Go, go to work. You have enough certifications. Anybody, and Omar, I don't know where you're at. Anybody in the United States, well, you have to be able to inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide, who has a hint of bilateral symmetry, and who can actually maintain eye contact with other human beings and show up to work on time, will have a good job. No question mark whatsoever. So, if, especially if in the United States, Omar, go get a job, go to work. That's what you're here for, go work. You're doing good. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Ping, 
Uh, any tips on how to deal with burnout, especially with topics you're not really interested in? There is no perfection in life where every step you make is going to be joy and sunshine and cookies. Um, I'm, I am currently rewriting my A-plus book. I'm not just saying there's any announcements. I, I'm not going to tell you anything that Comte is doing. Uh, but I will tell you, I think we will have an announcement for you guys within a week. Pretty sure. Anyway, uh, like I hate writing end of chapter questions. I hate it. I just hate it. So the secret is, is that it's great to do things that you love, and I certainly do love what I do for a living, but there are aspects that are unpleasant. The answer to that is be a professional and do the work. Do the work. You're not, four, or maybe you are 14 years old. I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble here. Uh, but there's certain times where you just have to grow up, and you got to do the work. I agree. Uh, shoot, I got to tell you, even studying for like a CompTIA uh, A+, there are aspects to the A+, that bore me to tears. Like, to tears. Uh, but you got to do it. And, and that's just part of it. What you got to, and here's the tricky, here's, here's the one piece of advice I can actually help you with. And that is, recognize that in general, your life is good and you're, you have good things. There's just this one little thing that's a problem or that little thing. Think about those unpleasant things like brushing your teeth or taking out the garbage. They are the not particularly unpleasant or nor particularly onerous, but the things we do every day. Get them done well, get them done efficiently and move on. Get back to the stuff you like. Now, if you refuse to do thing, anything other than what you like to do, then that's what we call a hobby. Hobbies are good things. They're wonderful things, but they're not going to make you any money. So that, that's the only other thing to consider there. David Mohan, uh, I agree. I know people, yeah, David is absolutely right. And, and I'm not picking on anybody here, okay? The primary reason you get any form of certification, not even just IT certification, like nursing certification or massage therapist certification or whatever it is, you do that for your next job. You do it for your next job or to keep the job you have, I guess, too. So <clears throat> there's a lot of very successful techs out there who have got a few certifications early in their career and have decided to never get another certification. I, I'm not a big fan of that because I use certifications as a measure of what you're interested in and where you want to go in the future. Uh, but it does work uh, because a certification is designed to get you your next job. So if you have a certain number of certifications, you should, you should have a job. Most of the time when I hear people, be careful what you're about to write to me, folks. I hear a lot of people and they're like, oh, Mike, I can't find a job. It's like, okay, well, where do you live? I live in Possum Bladder, Texas, population of 12. What's the closest town? Greater Possum Bladder, Texas, population 200 by the Walmart. Well... Can you move out of Possum Bladder and maybe go to like Dallas or Houston or El Paso or something? Nope. That's where I live and board. Live here with my mama. I'm happy. Okay, well, you know, then I can't help you. Because the other thing they always talk about IT is not only do you need certification, you have to have a little chutzpah, man. You got to get out there. Move. Take a chance. Live on ramen. Borrow money. You know, you, you can do it. Will Shaw, doing certs for fun. But Will, you march to a different drummer, Mon Frere, and I respect that. The important thing is, Will, you know why you're doing it, and you're okay with that. Therefore, I am also okay with that. Cable tester, not cable certifier. I always thought that the, uh, f well, the one I use is from a company called Fluke Networks. 
And I thought it was called a cable certifier. Somebody look it up for me. I don't remember. It's been a while. So I do fluke cable certifier. I think it'll pop up. It's like, I think it's down to $5,000 now. Sam Millard, how about renewing your cert? My A plus expired in 2020. Do I really need to update it? Sam, you're the one who has to answer that for me. Let's say uh, your A plus expired in 2020, but since then you've gotten, you've become a Cisco head and you got your CCNA and CCNP and you're working on CCIE. No, you don't need to get it. Look, CompTIA wants you to, okay? Uh, they want you to pay for a new exam and all that kind of stuff or do the CEs or whatever. And for a big part of our industry, there are a lot of people who do need to re-up. Uh, people who are working in a parts area, do, people doing first level uh, or second level uh, system repair. Yeah, they're the people who probably ought to re-up. But for most people, remember, you're, you're, cert, you're taking a certification for your next job, not your current job. And uh, for most people, they, they want to keep moving and growing and going up. Look, the more... The more vertical your skill set becomes, the more money you make. Kevin Peterson, possum ladder is home. Don't take that from people, Mike. <laughs> All right, Kevin, you're a pretty funny guy. JM, is New York City a good place to work in the IT industry? It absolutely is, JM. Uh, yeah. Jam, did you know I used to live in New York City? Jam, I lived at a little place called Elmhurst, Queens. And when I lived in Elmhurst, Queens, back in the late 80s, early 90s, there was this wacky comedian named Eddie Murphy who was starring in a movie about a block and a half from my house. And that movie was called Coming to America. And it was terrifyingly accurate as to my neighborhood. Uh, I, it... Uh, it was the most diverse, well, I guess Texas is pretty diverse. Very diverse place. I still have very dear friends that I am in contact with on a weekly basis uh, some 30 years later. Uh, so it was Elmhurst. We hung out in Rigo Park, uh, up and down Queens Boulevard, Continental Avenue, up by the Elmhurst Hospital, the one that got all swamped a year and a half ago from the corona. I love New York, man. I, I, I did good. Oh, Alan, I see. So first of all, guys, cable tester versus certif... Oh, geez. You guys are going to use my own words against me. Against me. All right. Uh, so Alan Owens at uh, 242. We're going to have... Guys, we're still giving away a voucher today. Um, okay. The problem is, is did, did I write in any of my books where I said a cable tester is the one that just does wire map, uh, that kind of stuff, and then a certifier? God, that's probably in my Network Plus book. Okay, you guys are right. All right, looking for questions. Will Shaw, Elmhurst, Queens. Yeah, I lived on, well, I lived on a little street called Dongan, D-O-N-G-A-N. So if you take the old, uh, it, it, Dongan teed into Queens Boulevard. That was a long time ago. I miss New York. Okay. All right, so I guess it looks like questions are quieting down a little bit. Bagel Street, Dongan, D-O-N-G-A-N, Dongan. Here, you guys want to hear one, one more New York story? Uh, so let's just say back in the late 80s, early 90s, I was, a little, I was more a person of faith than I am today. And so we were in this little Presbyterian church. And right next door, in a, across the street, but uh, on the same intersection, was this little, it was a temple, for, it was a synagogue. Uh, but there, it was just, the, the congregation was really old, they didn't have a lot of turnout. 
and my little church, we could sing. I mean, woo-hoo! I, uh, we, our choir had maybe 20 people in it, but we could ro- shake the rafters. And uh, so one day after services, the rabbi uh, from the synagogue comes over and he goes, you guys sing so incredibly well. He goes, would you be willing to be a chanter, which is it's kind of like the person who sings at a synagogue. It's more complex than that, but I'll, I'll keep it like that. And we ended up as... Presbyterians uh, doing chanter for uh, for the services at the synagogue. It was great. Yeah, uh, you put a couple beers in me, I could still do some of it. I'm not going to do it right now. I loved New York. Yeah, what's another really good story? Okay, I'll make one more quick story. So I'm in Midtown. We'd go in, we'd go into the city, dr- drive to Manhattan a lot for just you know get drinks or something in the evenings. And uh, I'm hanging out with this guy, and he goes, look, Mike, I'm gonna, we're going to go out for a double date, but I need to warn you, my date's a real monster. And I'm like, well, that's a terrible thing to say about your date, a monster. Anyway, the lady walks in. She's real tall. She's like six foot two. And my buddy was really short, a lot shorter than me. I'm only 5'6". Brandon was probably 5'3". So they were this really weird couple, and her name was Gainer, like G-A-Y-N-O-R. And uh, she was nice, uh, maybe a little airhead, but other than that, she was very attractive. Her hair was longer than Brendan was tall. Uh, we had a nice evening and all that. Anyway, towards the end of the evening, I was like, Brendan, why did you say she's a monster? She's a really nice lady. And he goes, well, Mike, do you know who, uh, her name's Gaynor Gwyn. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And he goes, do you know who Fred Gwynn is? I'm like, Fred Gwynn, I, I should know that. He goes, it's Herman Munster. This is his daughter. <laughs> we ended up driving to Connecticut. And uh, she didn't have a key, which made me real nervous. She bangs on the door. And it was like 2.30 in the morning. And guess who opens the door? It was Fred Gwynn. Herman Munster answered the door. That was a trip. He was nice. He was, you know, obviously she had done this before. But, was, but yeah, I got to meet Herman Munster in his pajamas. Uh, all right, guys. It looks like uh, we're kind of, uh, the questions have run out. Let's go ahead and do our last competition, folks. We're about to have our competition for a CompTIA voucher. And this is, these are provided by CompTIA. CompTIA, we love you so much. Thank you, oh great CompTIA. This voucher works for any CompTIA certification. I think there might be a problem with CYSA+, but even then, I'm not sure. It works on any CompTIA cert, okay? Secondarily, it works anywhere. If, if, if there is a country that actually gives CompTIA exams, it will work there. So this is international. Uh, and all you have to do is come here and pick it up. How's that for a deal? I'm kidding. (laughs) We'll send it to you. So anyway, for you folks from Israel or what other, one of those crazy other countries like uh, the Netherlands or, you know, one of those places, you know, they're covered in sand, uh, Belgium. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. All works there. Come on, Andre. I I got it to easy. You have to react or it's no fun. Mm Mm-mm-mm. All right, I'm digging up our last question here, folks. Bear with me a minute. Okay, Uh, since I've already got Network Plus up, we're going to do a Network Plus question. This is a wireless question. So, again, folks, the same rules as before. uh, I'm going to put the question up on the screen. The first person who answers it correctly... Do not type A, B, C, or D uh, will win. And remember, just because it looks like it's first on your screen, that doesn't mean it's first on mine. Or Dave Rushes, who helps pick these. Uh, So let's go ahead and do this. 
You guys ready? All right. You have just set up a wireless network and are having problems getting the signal to reach throughout the entire building. Right now, the access point is located at the western end of the building. The access point's frequency meets the requirements to cover the whole building. So why isn't it? Which of the following is most likely the reason why you are unable to get the signal throughout the building? Now before we, I'm gonna cut up you guys back off. Folks, this is a great question because it's very CompTIA style of question. All right, so let's take a look. What's, what's the reason you, you're unable to get signal? Is it the incorrect channel selection? Do you have encryption selected? Do you have a frequency mismatch? Or is it incorrect WAP placement? Go ahead and punch in your answers, please. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna let Dave Rush choose the winner here. Dave, take your time, my friend. Pick one. And Captain Dave Rush is gonna do it for us. Oh, well, I guess I should answer it though, right? Okay. <laughs> Gotta be incorrect. WAP placement. I mean, the, the access point's frequency, the whole building, comma, if the access point is in the center, this is on the west end, which is most likely, the WAP's in the wrong spot. Let me make sure I'm right. Move the AP, check your hand. D is correct. All right, incorrect WAP placement. Let's take a look at a few of these others. Incorrect channel selection. Uh, channel is not going to adjust your, your distances. Encryption is not going to ad adjust distances. Frequency mismatch, I mean, that, that's really not gonna do it either uh, because the clients tune into whatever the frequency, the access point is. So this is one of these you could almost answer even if you didn't know just by process of elimination. Incorrect WAP placement. All right. Da, da, da. Sorry. So in order to help me pick winners, Dave Rush needs me to say what the answer is. And I didn't say it. So Dave is scrambling right now. I, by God, Dave, we're going to go with your answer. Uh, your winner, Dave, Ru uh, let's get me back on here because he likes looking at me. There we go. All right, so Dave Rush has as our winner. Wait, Dave Rush is typing something. So for the record, I do this every Monday and Wednesday. Dave Rush does this on Friday, but Dave Rush is actually organized and pre-selects his question and does all kinds of wacky stuff like that. Uh, all right, so it looks like the winner is Daniel Klein. Daniel Klein? I'm just trusting my buddy David on that. Congratulations, Daniel Klein. You are the winner of today's Free CompTIA voucher. Daniel Klein, in order to pick your prize, you've got to do a few things. Number one, you have to send an email to davr at totalsem.com. Make sure to add your YouTube name, just like it shows up in the chat. Be sure you put your email address in the body of the email. Put your name used on previous CompTIA certifications. If you've never taken a CompTIA certification before, then just use your legal name. <coughs> Next, put in your country of residence. And if you're in a, uh, from the USA, put your state in as well. Uh, then put the country where you'll take the exam. From people like in the United States, that question doesn't make much sense to you. But if you're like my buddy Andre, who lives in the Netherlands but claims he's from Belgium, he can just basically take one bus and he's in another country. And then last, put the exact exam number. If you want to take the A plus 2201002, type that out. Don't just type in A plus. So congratulations to our winners today. Well done. Uh, giving away. That voucher is worth up to 400 bucks depending on the certification you take alone. So it's, uh, it's a good deal.
Bear with me, guys. I'm getting... Uh, and uh, Daniel Klein, uh, keep in mind that all these instructions I just gave you, they're posted in there as well. Last, guys, I forget to... Just because you're nice enough to be here, I've got one more. It's not a giveaway. It's a discount. But we have a 50% discount on combinations of ebooks and practice questions. So you want to get my A plus ebook and some practice questions, you get those at 50% off. In order to take advantage of this prize, what you have to do is head over to um, head over to www.totalsem.com, T-O-T-A-L-S-E-M.com. Head over to our merchant area, pick up, uh, say you want to do A+, pick up the A+, ebook and the A+, practice questions. Just put them in your cart. That's all you got to do. And then when you check out, type in the word Watson, W-A-T-S-O-N, Watson as in, come here, Watson, I want you. And uh, you get 50% off. What an incredible deal. Do take advantage of that. Uh, last, also do keep in mind, <coughs> we have a Discord channel. Okay, we don't have a Discord channel. Uh, our buddies have a Discord channel. It's the unofficial Mike Myers Discord channel. We pop in there from time to time. It's a very, it's becoming quite the busy little channel, uh, especially if you got like complicated questions or anything like that. Folks, I am probably the seventh best technician on that Discord channel. We have a lot of very, very good techs who show up there and, uh, and, and who can really help you, not only in terms of technical issues, but questions or anything like that about taking tests or topics on, on, on CompTIA certifications, there's a good group there. I tend to show up when I can, uh, go hot and cold on that. Uh, I just, I need to clone myself. Oh, but can you imagine? That'd be terrifying. So many jokes right there. And I'm not gonna tell you any of them, not on this public channel. But I'm thinking I'm pretty loud. Okay, uh, but I'm, I, I think we got everybody covered. Uh, wait a minute, I am Nitro. What is the best way to study printers on the CompTIA A plus uh, 1001? Well, the best thing to do about printers is remember there's not that many types of printers to know about. So laser, which is the big one, laser, inkjet of some type, impact, and thermal. Those are the four main types of printers. And assuming you're using my book, we go into a lot of detail about how they work. And the bit, the bit, the stutter. The biggest challenge a lot of people have with printers is they see these questions about, you know, Alice is trying to print to her laser printer and they're coming out pure black, completely black. What could be the problem? The secret to learning about printers so you can pass the CompTIA Plus is if you understand the technology, that question almost answers itself. It's not that hard. Uh, like for example, that would probably mean a blown primary corona. But so the, the secret is, is take the time to understand how the technologies work. And then go through, again, if you're using my study materials at the end of my printer chapter, I've got lots of scenarios in there. And once you read them, assuming you know how a printer works, you go, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, and uh, that's really the only real trick to it. Andrew, that's part of it. Okay, I think everybody's good. All right, folks, I am out of here. We got, uh, I, I see a lot of the folks who are actually on here now will be on uh, Discord. I'm gonna try to get on, but don't hold your breath. I, you know the worst part about being an entrepreneur is that your boss is a jerk. <laughs> so we'll see what I can do. Anyway, I am done. It is three o'clock straight up, folks. Good luck to you. Be sure to send me an email if you have any questions. Uh, and I'll be back on here next Wednesday. And until then, this is your Michael Myers saying bye-bye. Bye-bye.